What's up, man? How you doing? Hmm. Good. Good. How have you to been? be here. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to be here. No. <laughs> no. I'm so so tired. Just so it's hard enough de dealing with narco narcolepsy with meds that work. It's more difficult when they're trying to m mess with your meds and you, you get one that does doesn't work. <laughs> And so, so yeah, I'm just t tired. Tired is all, all hell, man. How, how you been? <laughs> good, good. I saw something at Target, and I thought of you. What did you see? So I was down the Lego aisle because mm -hmm. now I'm obsessed with Legos. I can't resist building those heads. So <laughs> I bought. I've already bought. I already built the Iron Man head, which is right here. Yeah, very cool. And then I bought a Carnage one, but I can't finish it because I'm my hands aren't delicate, and his jaw is like attached. I like just like one anchor point on each Lego. So whenever I try to like put pieces together, his jaw pops off and stuff. So I have to keep restarting. But today I bought Venom. There's a Batman one they had too, but it was less pieces. And you know, it's it's like his cowl, but it's all black. So nothing really stands out, especially looking at the box. You're like, this looks flat because it's just an all black cowl. Venom at least has unlike Carnage has a tongue and white teeth. But I saw one of the biggest boxes of Legos I've ever seen in my life, and it was the Ecto. The what? Ecto oh, one. Yeah, the Ecto whichever, one. Yeah, it's yeah, like and yeah. it's like it's not an afterlife one. It's no, like it's a, yeah, it's so big. I've never and, seen a Lego uh, box that people big. People in the mod Ghost Ghostbusters mod community have already started uh, doing like custom light kits for it. Welcome to the show. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. More on them in a bit. Yeah, the cut the the mod mod community for for Go, Ghostbusters is really really cool and a lot of fun. And I can't I can't wait for uh, L L R M to meet some of the people that I've been meeting. I was kind of waiting on. I figured that there'd be an afterlife tra trailer, but by, by now, <laughs> like a, a yeah, new a new one. one. Yeah. yeah, and and I wanted. Because I I belong to a couple of different Ghostbusters groups. I mean I'm I'm not I'm not a big Ghostbusters fan or or anything. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hear you. There there's this one group that I belong to, and and they they do uh, either a free uh, props like pr printer files or uh, sound files, even like uh, do how how to do 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 it your, yourself type stuff stuff. Which is really gr great because if if anyone's ever been a Ghostbusters fan, excuse me, if anyone's ever been a Ghostbusters fan and thought, oh, I would love to have a proton pack and and looked online, the thousands of do dollars for literally something that even if you start from scratch, you have no nothing. You go out and buy your your three D printer. Uh, and the only thing you have is a computer, right? You go out and you buy your 3D printer and some paints and sandpaper and, and the right stuff. And for, yeah, for probably about five, six hundred do dollars, you might be able to get a, a proton pack fr from scratch. But you're also now own a 3D printer, which was the biggest por portion of what you just in invested besides, you know, plastics. <laughs> And then buying electrical kits and whatnot, um, but yeah, they're they're a really good group of guys, and I'm actually gonna show their um, page up on here. Uh, let's see, I think I can. Why don't do... you like make one from scratch without a 3D printer? You know, just find shapes or you know. I mean, some some or people... even just like so it's not. I guess you want it to be exactly right. Whereas, right. like, if I was going to Comic Con, I'd be like, "What would be a cool Comic Con version that I could make of something?" <laughs> right. Not like well, not what that's like that passes for the prop, but one that people are like, "Oh, that's cool." Yeah. So some people can do stuff like that and find things, and and there's people that do all uh, like aluminum, and and they actually you know sh shape and bend and cu cut, weld and and all of that. But what you can actually do with a 3D printer, sandpaper, and paint. And this is all 3D printed, and and all from from a, a free set of of blueprints that you can get b belonging to this group. How I, much I mean, does it's, a, it's amazing. Yeah, about how much is a 3D printer? 
Uh, so basic low low ends start one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, for like um some of the more popular models like uh Cre Creality's Ender Ender series. Uh, so it's not like it's impossible to to get into. Mm -hmm. Um, then there uh this Prussia Prussia Prussia. I, I don't I don't know P R U U S A. This is one of the like older models that's like top of the line that one's like super ex expensive i've learned some of that but the th the thing is is that they're they're not all that way and there are there are people printing this this is a th 3d printed this is a legit alice frame, really frame good from the us job. from the us Ar army or U us military sur surplus but this is 3d printed um this might be the same neutrino wand that that i got it might be a 3d printed one i've seen people where you, you can't tell the difference I, even things that are are metal are often the 3d printed so yeah you just, you just give it a good paint job like where mm -hmm. the, um where it looks like it's kind of flecking off mm -hmm. on the top of some like you know it's, it looks like it's painted black and the paint's even coming off and you can see the metal under it it's cool yeah so this is the the group uh the 3d printed uh Go ghostbusters props uh they're they're really great um you go in and you can get get access to literally all 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 everything that you can find. I'm working on doing a uh, a uh, custom tra trap uh, using the Walmart traps that I've f found and and putting new, new lights mm. and spe speakers in it. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Cool. Uh, how do we get there? Oh, Legos and go and the light. Light kits and modding. Busters. That's that's yeah. how we got there. <laughs> so yeah, um, check those guys out, out. Join their group. They do do take tips and and donations for the the hard work. They, I, I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent complete, but I do know that at least a prototype of the um of the uh video game pack. So with the slime part mm. and the freezer part and the all all of that um uh quentin has has been working on that and yeah that's that's pretty freaking cool <laughs> as a ma matter of fact i could actually for the, for the okay. last, no, last other one. question for the expense of it sure how much is the material that prints uh spools vary depends on the the type of plastic from you know a few bucks to 20 30 dollars and um it all all depends on I you're you're not gonna buy a 3D printer and immediately want to start printing a a pack. Uh, I don't know if Quentin's the one that's got it. I think it was an, another gentleman um, that I've spoken with at the group group. He's actually got a massive 3D printer bed, and he was able to uh, single print uh, um, a cyclotron. This whole lo lower part, and that was kind of cool most people end up doing it in like halves or qu quarters and stuff stuff um but yeah man it, it it all all depends uh these guys will all help you out answer er every question that you've got uh give you links to the to the parts and pieces for for free um it's it's very very cool great group to to belong to i can't, can't recommend them enough if you're in to even looking at cosplay, like not even if it's Ghostbusters, this this group, if you brought them a three D printing question, they'll be able to point you in the right di direction. So they're pretty cool. I'm gonna write a piece, uh, kind of giving them a little bit more shine and and stuff. Uh, wh whenever the tr trailer does release, and also when we get some um, uh, c conventions go going, because that's the whole, that's the whole idea. Look, I, I, I love money. You know me. I, I love money. I, I, I want to be invent the next fidget sp spinner. You know, um, some goofy thing that, yeah, it, it's dumb and and is faddish. It doesn't change the world, but it doesn't take advantage of pe people. It gives them something to do. You know, I want to do that and just make a shit ton of fucking money real quick and quick and go about my business but the thing is when it comes to cosplay um so many people have 
taken their their secrets of how they got got into it, how they made things, and that's like their only business model, and they get to do the whole supply and demand thing, and all three three D printed Ghostbusters props wants to do is make it more accessible to to everyone, to where you don't need fifteen hundred dollars to do uh, to buy one proton pack. You could spend six hundred dollars and print. And build one proton pack and then spend another fifty dollars on materials to do your second and fifty dollars to do do your third and <laughs> so oh. you've done some co cosplay before your winter soldier with the cgi green screen arm or what whatever that's what i wanted to do uh, then, what i wanted to do that was 2020 mm. yeah what 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 year is that 2020 <laughs> i don't recognize year. that what happened? Weird. <laughs> oh man. So man, it's been a while since I've had you you on, Nick, because you don't exist in the mornings. P people are not aware that you're actually vampiric. Mm-hmm. Hey, how, how's how's things go going, man? What have you seen? What have you you actually went to a movie the the other night, Nick? Yeah. After after after, after hold hold on, let me let me set the stage because I haven't I haven't fu fu hucked with Nick in a while. Uh, I just watched King Kong and Godzilla on my couch. I'm never going to the movies again. Fuck the mo movies. I, I've got uh, uh, 32 inches of 1080p. I'm me messing with you, man. Tell us how the, how the movie was and what you saw. It's 40. I think it's 40 inches. <laughs> the last TV was 32. You're good, man. I'm just messing with you. What would you see? Him? How, how was it? Jammer and I went to the first Mission Impossible. Mm. Which is uh, the Fathom event. Yeah this week because it's the anniversary week and they were supposed to release a new blu-ray today and that's why i went to target and target didn't have the blu-ray <laughs> like a newly restored one not even 4k just a newly restored blu-ray so it actually would look different on my mm -hmm. tv because my tv's not uh, 4k it's 1080p yeah. it was well, fine 1080p is not 4k no that's not like my tv is just full hd it's not that's 4K. 1080p yeah yeah um it confused me it's all right. That's what I'm saying. They didn't, it's so weird that it's not a 4K like re-release. It's just a yeah. like who does Blu-ray re-release like because it's a remaster. It's a remaster, but why remaster it during the like 4K age just for 1080? Again, have you? I mean, look, look some every studio is invested in some 4K. It's not yeah, like, but. Uh, everything uses a what they call auto upscaling, upsc and often the the 1080p movies that that you watch when they get up upscaled to a 4K resolution, the average consumer doesn't would ne never know the dif difference. Uh, you could the average consumer if you took two two identical mid tier 4K televisions, one with a UHD blu-ray and one with a regular blu-ray with upscale ale the average consumer wouldn't know know the difference that's why uh it's cheap cheaper and in re reality depending on the the um the movie how it was shot and uh how, how it was rendered all will depend on whether or not 4k is even worth like star wars i don't think star wars should be in 4k not the ori originals well, I just because I of don't... the effects. Yeah, because they're shot on film, so you can always get more detail from film. Somewhat to a certain de degree, yeah. it depends on the quality of the of the film. Which That's true, know... and like I don't know. I guess you're right. The first Star Wars, they probably didn't have the highest quality film. It was whereas like once they hit the bit, like yeah, I'm sure Empire Strikes Back looks much better. A little, it does a little bit, bit, but the also original... someone who knows what they're doing as far as direct. <laughs> right. No offense um, to George Lucas, but Irving Kirshner, whatever, is a fantastic. When director. they did the first like upscales and stuff into blue Blu-ray and and even uh, some of the touch touch ups for the original, they were go going in and hand painting frames to hmm. c clean them up because de degradation and and just time time you know um I'm, I'm i'm actually probably gonna get even though i don't have 4k just because another release <laughs> um indiana jones is getting 4k this june for some reason that seems better than star wars i kind of agree with you like it seems like it's like you know they would have like it, that movie i was shot like a b movie but it was shot mm -hmm. with like the most state-of-the-art 
cameras and film available and with like a real budget compared to even so, empire which was only the budget was only as big as george lucas's pockets on empire strikes back yeah it was truly an independent film and it almost bankrupt him yeah very 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 true but with indiana uh, jones they actually has a studio behind them not just a distributor as yes far as paramount yeah um i think that would look i would notice the difference of 4k if anything you just see the film grain even better and you're like ah, i missed yeah. this People in their their film green, whatever. Uh, movement to, has a different look, I feel too. The movement does, that's absolutely. But that has nothing to do with from the film frame. to that's, uh, the, that's the actual frames per second. Frame rate. Frame rate. I mean, people will say this and that about grain, just like they they talk about pops or warmth in a in a uh, vinyl uh, uh -oh. record versus. Um, uh flossless flossless flawless or lossless there there we go lossless audio um or the the person that swears up and down to, to high heaven that no solid state amp will will ever make your bass sound as good as one with tubes and if any, <laughs> anyone got the tubes joke from harvey birdman uh please Hit me up at that Heil Malone on Twitter and let me know that you appreciate Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. Um, yeah, man, like I get it. I love old movies and it's like one of those things where you're like, I don't necessarily want to ever, ever see film go, go away. But does it's it really done. add anything or is it just a mental thing that tickles a, a particular dopamine button in your might brain? be? I think it's a combination of the two. Because the last movie I saw, I didn't even see it on film, but the last movie I saw shot on, like, shot on film, even though it wasn't screened on film, was Fallout. Mission Impossible Fallout. You can very, you can tell compared to every other movie very much that, yes, this was shot on film. And it was, so it's, I think it's the only movie, because in the, you don't, the one of the things about why some, a lot of studios went digital is because you can only do 3D with the digital file they thought because you can just like it's easier to manipulate you do stereoscopic just yeah 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 which looked bad at first but now almost every movie is uh just made 3d and not shot in native 3d which is crazy to me because yeah used, there used to be a big difference and you can tell which was which um what was oh yeah but um so this is the first movie i had ever seen i think i guess aside from the nightmare before christmas which they could have redigitalized that was shot on film and was in 3D because one time I saw it was in 3D. And 3D looks weird when there's a film grain because it kind of warps, you know, like to fit Tom Cruise's like, you know, 3D, you see the shape. The film grain kind of just lands on different levels. Hmm. And it was a really, like I wouldn't watch a movie shot on film in 3D again in the movie theaters, but you could definitely notice the difference in 3D. You're like, whoa. Yeah. Like just different layers of film grain if you're looking at like a character's face and then like the ceiling behind them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I've mentioned this before. One, one thing I was happy Manny, Manny was very, very well aware of is like the difference in why do c computer gamers game on 24 to 27 inch monitors? Almost all of them. Your biggest, most badass, elitist gamers might have three 27 inch mo monitors, but like their primary gaming m monitors, 24 to 27 inches. Why? Because the technology that's put in it, the resolutions, uh, the, the pixels, you know, uh, pixel count, the, the re refresh rates, the resp response times, the, the, the brightness, the, the ability to sync with, with, um, What's being output from from the GPU? All of that goes into these very special screens, right? And so when you tell someone, "Oh, I spent not me, me," but you, you tell you know if you have that type type of oh, I spent eight hundred dollars on a new new ga gaming monitor, and they're like, "Oh, well, how big is it?" You're like tw twenty twenty four point whatever inches or twenty twenty seven point whatever. And they're like. I could get a 65 inch 4k for the yeah you could but it'll won't look good playing csgo you know it's not gonna look good playing 
uh, uh, the 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 latest and greatest cyberpunk on an R RTX thirty eighty or, or or something like that. You know, um, a lot of people just I I think there's a mental aspect, almost like a social aspect to it. You know, mm. to to where you're you're taught it's um it's the not I don't want to say right. It's the uh, end thing or in the, this case, the out, out thing to be in into this other thing. Does that make se sense? Yes. No, it makes sense. Just a weird way of saying it, but it makes perfect sense. Be, being in with the with the out, the out crowd. Oh, yeah. I'm in with the out. Get me? <laughs> so uh, what's next? Uh, well, how, how was the theater's capacity? Were people excited to see an uh, a movie like that, given that the next one's you know, going to be, going to be hitting. And, um, I think it's still a lot of people aren't going to the movies. I think where you're at. Yeah. Because they were like, I mean, these things never get super full. Unless yeah, it's like a really, really classic movie. And it's in like Boulder where they're film snobs. Mm -hmm. Like if we're showing Casablanca or something <laughs> back in Boulder, that would sell out. Actually, I don't think it would sell out Citizen here in Kane. Westminster, but like even back to the future wouldn't sell out here in Westminster. Hmm. Alamo it would, but not here. In fact, they were showing Back to the Future this weekend also at nice. some theaters. I would love to go see that. And Top week. Gun this week, too. I'm not a big fan of Top Gun. Because I was inverted. Is that why you weren't a fan? You because you weren't of inverted? What? When you watched it, you weren't in inverted. You don't even get it. So carry on. The but... the whole whole thing when he's at the beginning, towards the beginning of the the film, when he has the run in with the with the Russians, and she's mm -hmm. all like, "Well, how'd you you know know this and that?" And he's like, "Cause I was inverted. I was looking at Adam." Oh, okay. Well, whatever. God, dude, go. I've only away. seen the movie once, and it was its last IMAX release, so probably five years ago, thirtieth anniversary. That's so the, the only 35th. time you saw Top Gun. Yeah, I haven't oh seen a lot God. of like I haven't seen like any of the old old school Tom Cruise ones. Like I haven't seen. Uh, I don't, I don't you know, like uh, Days of Thunder. It's not the one that's popular. Like uh, Cocktail or Risky Business. Mm. Like Nick, for me, Mission. Nick, yeah, Nick, when he became, uh, like he was already famous, but Mission Impossible shot him to like superstar. Like he had his own franchise, <laughs> which it, I think I wrote an article this week, and no one pushed back. People complain, you know, but maybe no one even noticed. You know, people sometimes will attack you because of an article. I called Tom Cruise. The last movie star yeah and it's true in a way and he's one of the only he's i think maybe he might be the only actor maybe will smith but he hasn't been as successful as of late that he's the franchise you're going to see tom cruise you're not going to see mission impossible you're going to see tom cruise you're not going to see an alien movie whereas like not literal alien but like edge of tomorrow they in fact people would show up to the movie theater when that came out and they had, no one could remember the name no one even remember Live, Die, Repeat, which is what people call it now. So they'd be like, I'm here to see the Tom Cruise movie <laughs> with aliens. But because um, you like Robert Day and Jr., unless he's in a franchise, his movies flop. Most of Chris Hemsworth's movies have flopped that aren't Thor. I think maybe all of them, <laughs> except for the Netflix one that he did with the Russos. Yeah. But like Extraction or whatever it was. Most movie stars these days are big because of the franchise that they're in. Like mm. Chris Pratt huge when he's in a marvel or a jurassic park not so much when he's in a western movie or pa passengers with jennifer L lawrence yeah well that was actually very popular because those jennifer lawrence is probably more of a movie star but it didn't, actually than she is a it didn't franchise score person. well it didn't do well though i i, I don't I think it made money i know it didn't get reviewed yeah well. <laughs> it, it fucking ninja turtles technically made m money <laughs> <laughs> the last uh, two um, and there's movies that sh should have made money that, that didn't, uh, like, uh, 2016's Pow Power Rangers, that should have made money, because it like is it. a shame those kids don't get a second shot. That's okay, the, the lead ranger, so Red Ranger? Yeah, Dar, Dar Dacry, Darcy, yeah, what, whatever, Darcy fucking, Montgomery or, or Australian or whatever the f fuck? I don't even know, Montgomery's but is last, so last good time. in Stranger Things. Yeah, like, and like good one of the powering. best like sci-fi type. Yeah, not spoil. I mean, I can spoil if I want. Villain, but not actually a villain. You know, just a d douchebag that got 
shitty hand well, and a nearly murderous douchebag yeah. that went full murderous when he you know meets darker forces stranger things you meet dark yeah. forces get corrupted yeah no power corrupts and and dark shadowy figures from the upside down corrupt even more <laughs> and i don't know if any of the other ones have i can't remember any of the other actors in it honestly except for like elizabeth banks and brian Cran oh yeah brian cranston only gotta be what's and then bill Hader. they they should have had multiple movies fuck the kids <laughs> That combination of actors, Bill Hader and Brian Cranston, as like I've only seen a few episodes of the show, but his what's the name of the character he plays? The big Zordon. Screen. He's yeah. an asshole in the Power Rangers reboot. Like I don't know if he is that way in the the, the original show or other no. movies, but he's a dick. <laughs> yeah. Um. The whole idea, though, I I I loved the way that mo movie started out, and I mean I can tell that you're not like a big like Power Rangers mythos guy. I don't know if you read the comic book from Higgins. No. Dude, you should ask ask J Jace if he can uh if he still got access to the Shattered Grid arc from Mighty Mor Morphin Power Rangers. I think it's 1 through 37 and read that. Just that one arc by by K Kyle Higgins. It'll ch change your mind on P Power Rangers for forever. It's it's legitimately like if they would make make that as a show on a, on any service, you would watch it and it would be the the greatest thing since Mar. Mar. I'm not ki kidding. It takes every everything that you like uh, from Super Sentai t type sh shows like that from from Power Rangers, and it and it takes it and it uh, ups it to today's standards not just for like adults but even today's standards for that tween to teens that could be be into that genre and it just brings it forward and in such a beautiful way that comic books is is one of the only way ways you could do it but um powerhouse and animation do do it shattered powerhouse higgins boom studios you guys I i'll help out I can't talk well, but uh, let's do let's do this. <laughs> you, you. Um, you no, know, I compared a recent HBO Max movie to Power Rangers. Hmm. Oh, I know what it was. This is such the weirdest thing. I'll explain why. Don't give me a moment, like to what before you freak out. Should, I compared the new Mortal Kombat movie to Power Rangers. Okay. I'm like, as someone who's not familiar with the franchise. It's like a movie where it's so, they're trying, like, this, this is the plot of both of them. They're trying to earn their powers for, like, the first two acts. And then the final acts, they get powers, fight, and then it's, like, over. And it's, like, kind of, you know, they both have yeah. their own mythology and stuff that I don't know. And that's what these two movies kind of both are. Yeah. And they no, both kind of have, like, the same level of, like, yeah, of course, especially versus the original. They both have the same level of, like, gloss to them. Yeah. I mean, violence is obviously completely different. Yeah. Well, it's not like they're fighting most of the uh, um, Marvel Combat movie. And most of the first Power Rangers movie is them trying to learn how to morph and spending time in school. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, they they breakfast clubbed it and it made it well, better. They actually get personalities to the characters. Yeah. They also did it like a, a you know, 90 minute e episode. And e every episode, you only got your C Power Rangers in suits. Once or twice, here we see the Blue Ranger once, we see Zordon as a Red Ranger in the beginning, and then you see them all morph to, to fight at, at the end. And then you usually only saw the Zords once. And so that all happened, and, and I kind of got it, but in my, my mind I was like, but it's a movie, which means we should get multiple no, times exactly. in the um, suits. And the suits it fought that, aesthetics. which I thought was oh. interesting. You liked it? No, the suit, the aesthetics. The masks the don't part. work anymore today. Just give them mouths. <laughs> I know it's like changing the design a lot. Just give them moving mouths. No, there's no need for for it. Why do you? That's, need to that's the only reason mouth? I didn't like the new suits. Was the the heads? I mean, I didn't like. Hey, let's keep opening up the the masks and stuff so the so the stars can be seen and 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 get their face time. Well, do they ever show them kind of in a Tony Stark view at least in the yes, original show where you're in a helmet? No, not really. Because I feel like that works when it's a kid show, but if you want to appeal to more people nah, and be a film that has merit, 
you have like the reason they invented the Stark thing, they didn't have that first. Was they're like, we need to be like, we don't need to see his face every time, but we need to be with the character. We can't be staring at it, can't be the Green Goblin. And uh, like if you if you leave Stark in the helmet a lot and you never show the inside of the helmet, it's like the Green Goblin in the original Spider Man. He just look, he's just the he could be any actor who's just nodding their head and like overacting. Like when they're on, you watched it recently, mm-hmm. I'm sure, <laughs> on the rooftop when he's like, I get it, kid, or whatever. And he sits yeah. next to him. It's just the like these exaggerated things. And once in a while, they'll zoom in close enough into his mouth that you can see the foe's teeth behind like what looks just like cloth mesh. Yeah. 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 But well, I feel like that's why you need to do more with the helmets or have them off more often like they did. Cause that occasionally, yeah, but not as necessarily as much as they did. And definitely not when you're in the vehicle. Like that's, I, I it, there's ways to do, do it. And I think, look, um, Marvel embraced, you know, Doc Strange's cl- cloak, his tunic, his, you know, cr- crazy yeah. get up. They embraced, um, uh, a lot of different costumes that I wasn't sure, like the first of, you know, Captain America in the, the Avengers, like the traditional Avengers get, get up without the, which they quickly got rid of. Thank with, God. Uh, but they, they still the Avengers. worked it, it yeah. in from the original suit which then they br- brought back like his first avenger you know our our, our uh his actual c- combat first avengers suit not the show suit um mm. which i, I, I love. even use the like i can't believe these movies are even able to work in like even if it's later like wandavision yes how like work in like the comic it. accurate but not mm. even like like not even like realistic eyes like in a sam raimi way where sam raimi like characters look pretty damn ridiculous yeah but uh yeah just pure like here's my halloween costume of a sokovian fortune teller yeah well uh on that that note because so- sokovia was was de- decimated and they definitely had to, to grow back a lot of plants and it would have been great if they had had grow generation for some of those plants uh who actually sponsor this this show and are the I had great, great sponsors of this this particular episode, and I think we're gonna listen to a Scottish guy talk about them. So yeah, let's let's go hear from Gr- Grow Generation. You can understand it. Grow Generation, where the pros go to grow. For all of your cultivation needs, Grow Generation has the right products, service, and staff to make your grow successful. Go to www.growgeneration.com, where the pros go to grow. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Scottish Can cam guy that that does the canti cantina with me on fridays available at the uh, lrm online podcast ne- network and of course the youtube channel where hopefully you're watching the, this video that i'm going to waste precious energy and resources that i could be using to to mine crypto doge dodge dodge i don't i don't know i'm joking, okay. joking around anyways oh nick it's been a while since we got to do just like a re- Regular wild card win Wednesday like this and just b- bounce all over the place between topics, man. You don't have me on anymore. Caught your, mm. caught your eye? <laughs> what? what about that What's MGM up? deal and James, James Bond belonging to Bezos, dude? <laughs> I don't really give a shit. I mean, that's actually, I mean, people like complain about stuff like that. I know he's the richest person in the world and corporations are evil and stuff, but that's how the world works. I don't care if Disney absorbs fox and in fact i think it's a positive and i think this is a positive too like amazon makes a lot of good movies and them having their own production studio that existed before they created amazon studios Mm -hmm. and franchises like bond i mean they they aren't like netflix except for during the pandemic they released almost all their movies on the big screen first like especially the not just the oscar ones but like and these movies even hit blu-ray before they hit Amazon movies like Manchester by the sea or whatever that won an Academy. Mm-hmm. Someone won an Academy award in it. Um, so I don't, I don't think it'll change much except for they'll be on Amazon prime instead of me having to buy them on Blu-ray. <laughs> Cause yeah, the bond will get a full release. I don't think they would change. They're not going to change any of the creatives at a lower level or be more, and they're not going to ruin it more than Sony ever ruined one. And Sony made two good ones and one bad one. No, yeah. two and two actually. <laughs> So, but they made the two, two best ones at Sony. So, yeah, as long um, as Amazon treats it like Sony does, it, 
they have the broccoli siblings or whatever still own it so um i know that um like manny and i have been talking about the the warner brothers deal with with warner media and discovery plus and the, the potential positives coming from that because you're taking it out of the hands of a company that cares about cell phone towers as their primary source of money versus direct or D- discovery who are content creators and co- content publishers. And their goal is to make content that, that well, people want to see. It's like Comcast buying NBC universal. Yeah. Like they're not a content creator. They're the person who shows you the content, but now they've joined forces when, <laughs> you know, obviously big rules set up by the, Federal Exchange Commission or someone? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's completely FCC, wrong. FCC, Federal Communications. Yeah. Yeah. They they obviously have to make deals where they can't, Comcast can't be like, well, now we're only carrying NBC Universal channels and <laughs> and they we're the only cable company in town. Like, yeah. Which is like... I think it'll be interesting. So what the main deal is that Discovery Network shows will be on the same streaming service on the One War Brothers shows, whether it keeps the name HBO Max or not. What well, uh may, maybe me may, but then like not. does it split cnn off a different direction because some of my favorite hbo shows are actually no, um, see, see ne- it, cnn shows like generation all, hustle and, all of uh, that all of that is is going to the same group literally at&t is going back to being a phone company a telephone company i know company. that the company is being divided somehow like the, it, Warner Brothers Interactive will no longer be part of Warner Brothers. Is one of the right. things that's, that's happening. Split. Ownership like, is so... still split. So Warner Brothers still owns uh, uh, controlling an interest in it, even though they're going to be their their own entity by stocks or by the by the method of the deal. They still own a control a control of it. Got you. Um, what about uh? Doesn't what about DC Comics? Really, you guys already discussed that, but I haven't heard. So that is, I don't even remember the specifics on where DC was g- going, how they were going to be done, done, but they are going over with Warner Brothers itself. And Warner Brothers is maintaining control of the DC comics the way way that I, I understand it. How wild would it be if... It would never happen, but this deal in some magical multiverse, DC split from Warner Brothers and any company could bid for them. What a crazy world that would be. We'd be I think we'd be getting better movies unless Sony bought DC. Like That'll Paramount. Happen. Give DC to Paramount and then Bad Robot can really work its magic more than him well, being at Warner Brothers right off, now. Warner Brothers won't sell the rights they might no no I, it would never happen but yeah except for at&t apparently this is the mo- one of the most bumbled like it's not even the economy isn't even the fault of this falling apart no, it's they like just they just bungled it so bad fast and the wrong yeah. people in charge looking so at i'm saying imagine a world where they screwed up so much that they split warner brothers oh. and dc apart and now dc was on the market yeah. i would hope that disney would buy it never no. combine the two but I've always wished Kevin Feige was in charge of DC also, because I'm like, we would get a co- we wouldn't, we would just even leave it at Warner Brothers, but put Kevin Feige in charge. Of, like, they need a Feige who could be like, yeah, we're not Disney, so we can do our R-rated movies, but here's a plan. Like, and a lot of people, you know, they like certain or all DCEU movies, but I know a lot of DC fans who are like, you know, enjoy them, but they're still pissed. They're like, I wish I had what my Marvel friend has, as far as like, like, I, I and someone for the site says that they're like I wish I had the, an actual DCU where like it was all connected and it was planned in advance and it wasn't like just like one man who's like I'm gonna make a trilogy or I'm gonna like kill one of the main characters and like uh, it's disappointing to me as a DC fan. It's one of the reasons I hate a lot of the DC films is because I am a DC fan, but just what they've given me, it's like what what. I mean, do a good really... version of that character before you change that character. Yeah, but do you even need a connected universe over at DC? Like, they're they're even afraid of their own multiverse. That they're the one ones that that created it and everything, and they they treat it like it's 
it's d dangerous. Oh, we're going to cancel our new gods because uh, we don't want to confuse people. But no, we're not going to make any more Snyderverse stuff either. So, like, whatever. Actually, you know what? Someone tweeted something really interesting, but I, it was just a Snyder fan sounding dumb because it doesn't make any sense. They're like, What's that? why do you think Zack Snyder's been so calm? You knew that Warner Brothers leadership would change soon. <laughs> but I was like, oh. he hasn't been calm. He's been bitching about Black, uh, yes. the Green Lantern thing. Ever since the movies come out, like it's not like he's online talking. Yeah, he is. Like he gets interviewed a lot, and he's always like, "Well, like the last time he was interviewed, he brought his phone, which had an image of it, fully special effects." He's like, "See, here's what you all could have had." <laughs> and the audience is like, "Boo, we hate Warner Brothers." Well, I mean, let's let's be be fair. Is that you know Warner Warner Brothers does put out a lot of garbage no they do but DC, like see but just like i feel like they also put out good dc films besides Zack snyder's besides Warner Brothers was in nolan. charge of the dark knight besides N N nolan and i'm and no because i like a few of the dc nolan? movies <laughs> i like a few of the dceu movies i like yeah. uh birds of prey i think good. it's one of their best i like shazam um, shazam was fun is that but... it Bir birds of prey and shazam, shazam? Until su su the, the Suicide Squad com comes out? Yeah. Oh, no, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I've never even seen Aquaman. I hear that's one of the better ones, but I haven't even seen it. I can. I like the new Justice League, but like, oh, quite the, a bit. The, I don't love it, but I gave it a 7 out of 10. Or the Snyder, yeah. Snyder ver yeah. version? It is much better. It's not just much better if you have the time. It's I probably won't watch it for years movie. in my life. I thought it was, like the ending is so much better. Like, but it's still the same mo movie. It is literally. But it really just isn't four, anymore. Four hours. The first of the half. Same the first movie. The first two hours bored the shit out of me because it felt like the same movie. And then when they started, when three and four were heavy on the Flash and Cyborg, which basically had all their storylines cut in the original film, started to get interesting. And then just like the ending is completely different because he reshot the entire thing. But you still have the exact same result. It's the same movie. The yeah. heroes come together. Soup still comes back in the exact same same way, do, doing the 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 exact same thing. That was disappointing. I thought Zack Snyder soup. had a cooler way to bring back Superman. That's the lamest fucking thing. <laughs> Just a, a a different colored suit that he doesn't. They they only have one moment where he uses the suit for the black suit's purpose. He flies up to the sun to to you know ab help absorb extra rays and re re-energize but that's because snyder just thinks it looks cool exactly and other other people that did and oh my god the snyder fan Nick. there must not be comic fans snyder no fans. hold on hold on it's not just it's not just them i'm about to to, to go off well welcome la ladies and gentlemen to, to oh. uh, one of the last episodes of lr mornings before we shift over to the daily, daily cup of genre on thursday but but nick Fucking look at the Sony fans right now. Look at the vi people that hated, yeah. hated, hated Venom 20 2018. Didn't watch it, talked smack about it, and they are all like, oh, carne. Yes. So, so, so exciting. They're like a b bunch of fucking weebs go going nuts over, <laughs> over some, some n new, uh, 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 an anime hitting, and I, I'm, uh, fucking hundred percent we we but dude they're 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 just oh oh bre breakfast scene oh, oh, oh all all over me P please like th that's not fun you guys hated that that shit like what the fuck are you talking about how is that good good let me tell you kyle <sighs> i have the exact same expectation for that film as i had for this film the day after i watched the first venom movie where i'm like Oh Christ! And even when exactly. they cast, even the director, it's Andy Serkis. You're like, he at least has an eye for a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm still like, I watched the trailer and I'm like, oh fuck! <laughs> like, I've never, and to his credit as being a different director, I've never seen a film. I'm probably I'm exaggerating, but like, it looks exactly like the original in every way in the trailer. Yeah, like including Tom uh, it's Hardy. Just like, this, this it, franchise is going to boil in. down to it's always going to be a symbiote fighting a symbiote. Because Until like they, they even like one of the Easter eggs involved. is like this guy becomes toxin like mm -hmm. the behind the scenes stuff and you're like yeah. oh okay. 
I mean, it could just be a fun Easter egg like the MCU and old Spider-Man films, or that could be fucking Venom 3 is him fighting well, to- Toxin. No, Toxin actually eventually becomes a good guy, believe it or not. No, I know a lot of the um, suits. I mean, Venom eventually becomes a good guy. So I well, believe it about Toxin. Yeah. Um, but like, no, there's even like the, there's even like a whole Venom core, which is like, none of them are Venom, but they're like they're a team that works for S.H.I.E.L.D. or the good guys that all have a, a symbiote. They all have a symbiote. I think one of them is Toxin for a while in the Maybe. comics. Like yeah. they, in the, what was it called? I think Carnage USA, which is my favorite Carnage story. It's about Carnage and Fest's a Colorado town. It's not why it's my favorite. Um, because he Burn, he feeds from the he feeds from the meat grinding facility and is able to possess everyone in town at once. Hmm. Even the Avengers go to fight and he possesses all of them. The Spider Man goes to the Avengers. He's the only one who escapes because of his connection to Carnage. And then he's like, Agent Venom. It's Agent Venom. So uh, Flash Thompson, but he's like, Hey, Agent Venom. Like, I know we still don't get along because you wear the suit and you go crazy when you get close to me. But we can't <laughs> do this without you and the other, you know, the Venom team. So it's pretty cool. I I did notice that in it, it there seems to be a few things, a few draw, drawings that he was making uh, that seem to uh, be hinting at a, a storyline from a few years ago that that came to a head recently with the uh, King in Black or whatever, yeah. Noel or whatever. Oh, really? They added is. to that original story? Yeah, uh, there was like um, under underground, and I think under a tree, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, Venom reboot book, if you will, or you know, jump on point or whatever, whatever, they find that there's like a symbiote cult religion type thing uh, under species. I mean, they even learn more about that. And uh, yeah, and Carnage was trying to get at it to to get the power that could could be released. And it looks like this this movie might borrow some of that, which is a a massive jump the shark t- type thing without the the proper setup. And we still don't have. We still don't have a reason for Eddie and Venom to be the, the way they are or for the eventual hatred at, at Spider-Man man to exist. Fuck you, Sony. Shit. You're fucking up the PlayStation 2, so I'm just about to done. <laughs> oh, man. This has been fu- fun, Nick. You should wake up earlier. J- join us on the mor- on, on the day- Daily Cup of Genre. This is the morning, today. and this is apple juice. <laughs> And and this is just simply a um uh oil vapor thingy. So yeah, yeah, man. Um, I think I think we're good for the day. This was a wonderful should, wild card Wednesday. We should tease. What's next? What, what are we we us? teasing? Okay, so so got guys. Thir, this this is uh this is one of the last episodes for LR mornings, sort of. Uh, uh, on Thursday, uh, you'll actually be getting to two episodes, a kind of final farewell to, to LR mornings, uh, with a few, few of us. And, uh, then, uh, the regular li- live, uh, LR mornings, but look for the, the title da- daily cup of genre, the, uh, da- daily cog. There's going to be some th- theming and stuff go- going along with that same sh- show, um, Hopefully, better quality as as we we move forward. But I wanted to kind of get away from the morning time because videos can take forever to to render. And <laughs> when we plan on doing more live shows in the in the future, um, but when we're doing recording and have to you know process ren- render all that, it, it takes time. That mean you'll and, be doing more shows in the evening, yeah. and I can be on potentially. Oh, we yeah. we shall see. <laughs> Hope so. We used to do this more often. I feel we should. Like you left me. No, you left, you, me, you left me. No, you decided to go better yourself and get get extra e- education. So that's, that's on you. True. you. But yeah, guys, uh, it's it's been an awesome two years. And like I said, this is just a change change in branding. It's still uh same same people, same time ish, same idea ideas bringing you bullshit. Uh, c- commentary on entertainment n- news, uh, g- geeking out o- over stuff, and uh, watch as I slowly convert M- Manny into a weep with me and Christine. They didn't and, tell you what's that? 
We're getting a brand new Kyle. Everything else is staying the same. Oh, uh, hired a new Kyle. Oh no, there's there's another one. No, I mean like you're being replaced on your show. They didn't tell oh. you that. <laughs> we got another Kyle who's coming in. His name's not even Kyle, but we've recast. Everyone we, else will be back. Kyle. He, you've been recast. I am the show. Sebastian Stan is going to be playing Kyle from now on. <laughs> just just Starting like to grow Br- back his Winter like Soldier Br- hair and beard. Brie Larson's going to be be Mara Jade. Oh my! Oh my God! In the same week that Cam and I literally looked in the camera and said, "Guys, not only did they say KK w- was staying, but we're telling you that everything that we can see as people that don't really think she should should be there." Uh, for multiple reasons, none of which are are ideological. All when you just look at, you know, turnover of like the directors, extensions on on stories. Yes, she's made money in this this area, but what about that? Wait, you wait, know, wait. it's not even a true story, is it? No, no. That that's what I'm saying. Is oh, okay. For for weeks, so I clicked had... on that story. I mean, I didn't even click on. It. I saw it on yeah. YouTube, and I blocked whatever yeah. page was sharing it because well, I'm like, that's not a real story. <laughs> That's there, a scoop that someone made up. And I saw another yeah. scoop, which is like Ray's Ray is go, future story will be explored in the Mandalorian season. Three and like, that makes no fucking stuff, sense. Yeah. This page um, is blocked. <laughs> they're, they're, they think that because we do believe that, that there's going to be a con- connection to the, to the Palpatine clones and stuff via because of a uh, bad batch. Uh, well, not, Omega, whatever, not just th- that, but also just uh, in what you see in, in Mandalorian. What they're trying to do with Grogu's blood, those weird, yeah. s- what what I would have called a Sporati cylinder, which is a cloning c- cylinder in the old e- EU, those things that you see in, in Man- Mando, like yeah. p- people are expecting. I think uh, Maz Kanata is going to be a part of the Ahsoka show uh, because be she gets the ha- hand. The hand was recently, or she gets the light lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber. Because there's a very specific phrase in in uh, a New Hope. Your father wanted you to have this, um. So yes, it's Luke's Skywalker. Well, lightsaber. there's Luke's lightsaber one and Luke's <laughs> lightsaber two. You know, then he I'm built his own fucking lightsaber. Round, and it was cool God. and green. I do love the green. I wasn't um, the first green lightsaber ever, right? Because those were only were like yeah. We, we didn't see any other Jedi. Yeah, except for Obi Wan and Vader and that yep. whole franchise. <laughs> And uh, use that. I mean, Yoda, but he doesn't use a lightsaber or jump around like a rabbit. He's a cool ass no. puppet. Um, and pe- people, yeah, we might see like you know Ray's de- dad, who may have been a cl- clone himself, may have been a biological kid. We, I don't, I don't know. Wasn't if he? Ex- then they that. say he's a clone of. I don't remember. Well, they said that she's just the granddaughter. Maybe they yeah. didn't say. So I, you, you know, see him there, there's for like a second. He yeah. looks just like uh, Owen, like young Owen. <laughs> yeah, you're you're just gonna. It's just you know, it is it is what it, it is. But look, the now all of a sudden people are are using even more clickbait things, which is KK is gone. Oh wait, no, no, she's not. But she, she might be in the fe- no guys. Like leg- legitimately, don't get your. your I have a hope- scoop. What's, she what's definitely your... will be gone in the future. In the eventually, future. we yes. just don't know when. Eventually, <laughs> she At definitely point, will be gone. Eventually, Kathleen Kennedy to die in future, like yeah. like every other hu- human being. And you, and <laughs> also with you, yeah. Nick Dahl to die in fu- future. <laughs> um, Unless I get a time machine. I oh die my in god! The past. Breaking new, breaking new, breaking news. Kyle Malone is go- going to die in the in the future. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert! Jeez. No. Yeah, guys, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in, in all all entertainment news needs and and opinions, because uh, sometimes uh, reading an opinion is a, good, is a good thing. I mean, that's debate, ar- arguments, and things like that. Uh, but you want legitimate uh, 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 takes on scoops or leaks or, or whatever, v- visit lrmonline.com every single day for all of that and more subscribe to the youtube channel i can't tell you guys all all of the great stu- stuff that we've got on there from the celebrity interviews to uh uh this sh- show uh our our anime versal breaking geek radio radio the podcast uh look for their awesome dun- dungeons and dragons god awful long ass videos that are going to take for forever to fucking render uh to hit 
it hit the uh, U- YouTube channel this week and uh, uh, Cantina. And then, Nick, t- tell them a little bit about th- Thor's Day. Hey. All right. Marvel Multiverse Mondays is unfortunately titled um, because, as we all know, Loki is making Wednesday the new th- Friday. So rather than make you wait until Monday, excuse me, we're going to record on Wednesday after Loki and release it on Thursday. So we're calling it Marvel Multiverse Mondays presents Loki Thor's Days. Um, We're actually starting this week, even though the show isn't out um, on on this Thursday, Thursday, in case you don't get it. (laughs) I feel like an idiot for having to explain it. So I'm probably the idiot. Um, We are going to start with Thor. Well, I just watched Thor before we did this show. And we're going to talk about Thor, the Dark World. Then we're going to talk about Thor, Ragnarok. And then Loki will start. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're watching it from a Loki point of view, which actually made the movie play differently for me. Um, oh, okay. So I was, if you haven't I'll watched have it yet, remember, my... we're watching it yeah. for Loki. So look at it from the Loki point of view. Instead of just as the whole whole movie. Yeah, right? like you're watching it for Loki. We're not, we're not doing a Thor podcast series yet. So. <laughs> We'll rewatch them all again. Oh God! <laughs> when it's time for, for Thor: Love and Thunder. So yeah, so watch out for that. We'll be on Thursdays. For now, I assume we'll switch back right after, and then hopefully the next show not. is on Fridays. I hope. I hope they keep the future shows on on whatever. It does make podcasting about them before the weekend a lot easier. Yeah, but I I don't know. This feels like it is. I don't know. The, the, the main thing I named the show Marvel Multiverse Mondays because that's what we thought. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, what what what's in a in a name? You know, what's in a na- name? It was alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was fun. I I I know, and it was clever, Nick. And we we Thank all appreciate you. it. And we'll appreciate it if you guys check us out at that Kyle Malone on Twitter, at that one one Kyle Malone on Instagram. Nick, where, where can they find you at? I'm at Geeky Nick Doll on Twitter. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>